We have uh, uh, two abstracts during this session and each should is given five minutes for each presenter. And I would like to welcome uh, Christina uh, Marik and Juma Salim, uh, both from uh, uh, the Public Institution of Science and Technology. And this is uh, uh, based in uh, Northern Tanzania, uh, basically in Arusha. Uh, I welcome you to this session and um, uh, I'll give each of you five uh, minutes to go through their abstract. Uh, you are welcome. Uh, I will start with uh, Christina. Uh, she has um, uh, an abstract titled uh, Fetal uh, Heartbeat Monitoring Support Belt for Pregnant Women Diagnosed with Mild Preeclampsia, uh, Stroke Hypertension in Tanzania. So you are welcome if you're online. And um, she's not online. So is Juma online? Okay, so I will start with uh, Juma Salim and uh, probably will be given sharing rights and you take us through. And for all the participants on the link, please let's listen in. Thank you. Please, Juma, Juma, kind and mute yourself. Are you hearing? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. I am Juma Salim, a student from NMS. I'm here to present my project with title of IoT on newborn room temperature control system with fire detectors. This is a problem solving at Mount Mary hospitals. My supervisor is Dr. Ramadan Sinde and Dr. Shubis. Let me take you on background of the problem. I think the, the slide is stuck in. Hypothermia is a worldwide problem facing new infants, especially B terms and low birth weights. Tanzania also facing these problems as it's contribute up to 19% of this of infants as mentioned with by Winkler's research bed in 2020. This project is conducted at Arusha whose region is surrounded by cold mountains so its environmental conditions is so cool. So in addition to skin to skin, breast feedings, and other methods used to prevent infants from hypothermia, Montmere hospitals use overhead heaters to for resuscitations. As we see here. The heaters used in Montmeru has no any control facilities instead of on off switch and also lack of communication between the control room and the nurses, as well as the lack of communication links between the systems and the technicians. So these projects come to solve these problems, as we see here. The solution consists of two units. The first one is main control unit, which placed in infant's rooms. And 
The other one is the nurses room interface units. In main control units here, we have switching units, which will control automatically the heaters to turn on or off, depend on the user settings. Here we have sensor units that will read the environmental condition of the control room here and send this, this information to microcontrollers, whereby microcontrollers perform action according to the information received from the sensors and the user stored parameters. So the main features of these projects is located in these switching units. It consists of current sensors that enable to know if the heaters is active or fails. In case of failures, this information is sent to microcontrollers, whereby microcontrollers send the command to switch the backup heaters, because our heaters now is connected in two pairs. One is the current one that's serving the rooms and the others is act as a backup. So if one fails, then the microcontroller automatically send the command to turn on the backup heaters and continue to serve the rooms, while at the same time generate a small short message to inform the technical teams about the fault through GCM network technologies. Also, this information about control room is shared to the nurse rooms where they can see the all information in real time. Here we use roller technologies to, to establish the communications between the infant rooms and the nurses' rooms. Also, our system concerns a keyboard, which enables the nurses to set the required temperatures at the infant rooms. Below, follow the, the, the following slide show the prototypes of the proposed solutions. Here, the left one shows a controlled room which contains two pair of heaters. The first one is lighting. This is the main heaters now is working. In case of failure, then the system will turn the backup heaters on. In the right hand side, shows two boards here. The first display here is connected to main control unit, which show the temperature and humidity. This time is 36.3 Celsius and uh, with humidity of 37%. And the status of the heaters now said is okay and the heater two is okay, no fire indications. And the same information is available in NAS rooms here, the lower screen here. The same information is seen, 36.3 and 37.3, and no fire resistance and the heater is okay. That is our prototype. The system has been tested and performs as expected. And hopefully, if the system will properly use it will reduce the existing problems now at Montevideo. Thank you for giving me this chance and thank you for listening. Sign for the great presentation. Uh, don't know if we have any question in the Q and A section. I don't see any. Uh, um, I just have uh, a few questions from my side, Salim. Uh, thank you for this great innovation with your team. Um, I would want to say that um, hypothermia has uh, been a, a great problem uh, for the babies, and actually, it is uh, not that because people don't have uh, don't don't have the machines to use. However, it's what you've said: the uh, original one or the, the initial one, the, the, the ones that are available, probably are based at the baby's side and uh, nurses have to go on and check in all the time. However, this innovation uh, seems to be kind of connecting the baby's rooms and then the nurses' uh, uh, stations. 
which is really great. And it is showing what's happening at the same time in the baby's room and then at, this, at your side as the nurse at the station. So this would be so good if it is kind of uh, rolled out uh, and uh, to use uh, at a large scale. However, I have a question, uh, Salim, that uh, how affordable is your technology? Is it uh, generalizably can be used elsewhere and probably how affordable is it if people are use it at a large scale? Uh, secondly, I think you had um, answered what my other question was about uh, it being tested and put in use. So, so far you're using it at only one hospital, right? For the second question, still now, because we found the problem at Montemero, I think other regions in Tanzania, they're somehow hot, so they don't even use the heaters, especially as me come from Zanzibar, which is hot. So the nurse okay. rooms almost use electric fan instead of heaters. So I think others region maybe in cold air region, they can use this system if they want. But the first question, how is affordable? I don't know. I don't understand your question well. How do you mean for that? My question is, uh, if your technology was be taken up and taken up in a hospital and I'm putting yes. up my hospital or I want to put it in a, a government hospital, yes. how affordable is it in terms in of terms cost? Oh, of course. I think the system is only initial cost is high, but in the mass production, the cost will not be high. So we can generate a lot of in somehow low cost. So what, what, are, what, are, what are the plans of um, uh, scaling it uh, to a larger scale? Any, any thoughts, any plans to scaling it up? Yes, I have think it's to make it as a large scale because this project cannot only use the hospitals, but even for raising a, like chickens in some farmers, they can use it. So the only the settings, how can it be usable? So anyone, if we want, then we can just modify it to be proper using. Oh, maybe my, my answer is not clear. Yes, Juma. Um, um, I, was, I was saying that uh, thank you for the presentation and uh, thank you for the innovation. Please continue to scale it up and probably it is a, a good idea. Thank you so much for attending the conference. Thank you. Um, is Christina on online? Yes, I'm online. Okay, uh, Christina, um, thank you are welcome. Um, I would go ahead and put up your presentation. You have five minutes and uh, let us know uh, what your research is. Kindly unmute yourself, please. Can you all hear me well? Yes, Christina, I can hear you now. Okay. So good afternoon all, and thank you very much for giving me this, this opportunity to present uh, my project to this conference. My name is Christina Mariki, and I would like to share and present to you my ongoing project uh, about fetal heart rate of beat monitoring support belt for pregnant women diagnosed with mild preeclampsia and a case study of Tanzania. So uh, I was inspired to do this project uh, with a respect to the current ongoing situation in health facilities here in Tanzania and uh, the rate of stillbirth and neonatal, uh, neonatal death ongoing due to uh, high blood pressure in pregnancy, uh, which is very common here with respect to the lifestyle of many women here in Tanzania. 
And uh, so the background of this uh, project, uh, it was inspired with the stillbirth number. It has been, it has not been a, a low number to ignore. And uh, among the causes of these stillbirths, uh, hypertension in pregnancy or high blood pressure in pregnancy has been uh, listed as one of the causes. So uh, I studied uh, several studies uh, before my research and uh, found out so many people have been trying to uh, getting solution or getting uh, to know more about the causes of uh, infant mortality rate uh, from the year 2019 to 2016 onwards to 2021. 20, but also um, the main challenge and problem is the current standard of care for health facilities here in Tanzania. So uh, before the COVID-19 break, breakout, uh, it was easy for women to visit hospitals uh, for care every once in a month, but also even in the middle as much as they would. But now it's not safe anymore. So most of them are, are trying to reduce the number of uh, visits, scheduled visits, but also to reduce the crowds in hospitals. So this brings a major risk for women who are diagnosed with mild preeclampsia, since uh, they are not they are not admitted in hospitals like the ones who are suffering from severe pregnancy and pregnancy. So as they are released to go and uh, uh, to go to their home places to monitor themselves and only come on schedules, it brings the risk and most of them lose their pregnancies or uh, their children by miscarriage unknowingly, which could have been prevented if they had a continued monitoring of their fetal heart rates. So that's why I came up with this uh, idea to develop uh, fetal heart belt monitoring support for uh, monitoring the fetal heart rate when they are at home or their area of residence. This uh, belt is uh, it's ongoing. Uh, the, the design is ongoing, but I was able to achieve some objectives up to now. I was uh, able to re I mean, to review and identify requirements, but also to gather some data, which is supporting me and uh, the design of this, uh, the, the Fito Heart Belt uh, system development. But also uh, currently uh, it, was, um, it was inspired mostly about, uh, it was inspired mostly with the, uh, with the ongoing current situation. Since women do not go to hospitals as often as they used to, so now this belt will help them to monitor and uh, get information through their smartphones or even these feature phones so through the USSD uh, method or technology, but also the doctor will be given that that will be receiving the data of the updates after when the woman wears the belt. Uh, so it is, a, it is a belt which is going to simplify the transfer of data about the well-being of the mother and the pregnancy, because it's going to also include uh, temperature, uh, temperature measurements and also the mother's heartbeat measurements. So I, I use a mixed methodology to gather data, but also agile methodology as I was designing this system. Uh, here I won't share the pictures because it's in conflict, but uh, uh, it's a it's a project which has just started two months ago. So hopefully after three months from today, it will be uh, ready to test and validate. So uh, my project has uh, so many significance to this African society, specifically here in Tanzania, uh, since uh, it's going to allow the real-time data transfer. You know, the one which is used currently does not, it allows transcription from the from the machine to the papers or the system, but there's no accurate transfer of the data of the measurements taken by the, by the doctor to the mother. But also this is going to reduce the number of fetal death caused by a uh, lack of monitoring of the heartbeats. But also it's, it's going to help so much uh, to raise awareness in our community uh, here in Tanzania, but also in East Africa on the importance of continually uh, monitoring the fetal heart rate to avoid uh, stillbirth, neonatal death, but also to avoid ma maternal death. So thank you very much uh, for listening. It was a very short presentation. I hope you understood uh, what I was trying to share with you here. Thank you, Christina, for the uh, presentation. Uh, I thought you had said you had some pictures to show us. Uh, 
I, I, I said I don't have pictures to share with you right now because uh, it is more of the motherboards and the sensors, so it is not going to be easy for you to help me, but I could switch on my video to show uh, what I have here. Great, great, great. Christina, 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 face as well. And Juma I, will also I, be able to uh, put on a video and probably we'll see who the presenter is. So I see I don't have permission yet to, to share the video. You can you share can now, share. can go ahead and share, Christine. Uh, so uh, in the meantime, you're trying to share, Christine, I have a few questions and uh, maybe thank you for the innovation. Uh, so uh, preeclampsia is a condition that is really common. And as you elaborated some with the current COVID conditions, uh, most mothers probably are sent home or this occurs at home and then mothers are poorly monitored. So if your innovation really comes to life, it may be um, of importance and would help uh, save those uh, mothers that are probably losing their babies and the mothers also losing their lives. However, I have a small concern, uh, Christina. So this belt, for the belt, um, does the mother know uh, what the uh, readings are or it's basically uh, at the end of the, uh, the the doctor or the nurse that is connected to the tool that is able to read. So the mother is only supposed to put on that belt and when all the time, uh, or they are given instructions on when to put it on for the data to be uh, uh, taken back to the, to the, to the doctor. And uh, my other worry is, um, uh, so this is this should be given to them at the time of discharge when they are going back home. Is the doctor always on phone or on the gadget to kind of get in touch with the mother or specify the mothers that are high risk, as we've said, should be uh, continuously monitored at the institute or at the hospital where they've been uh, seen. Thank you for your good question. So the plan here is to first, uh, we are going to send uh, three kinds of data. One is going to be to the mother's cell phone, uh, which is going to be very simplified to give her the feedback that she's on going well, uh, the baby is well and is kicking or the, the baby is alive in the stomach, very simplified information for her to understand. But the data which is going to be sent to the doctor, it's going to be the readings now, the graphs or the numbers themselves for him to interpret. But also, um, we are going to have a level, uh, a summarized level of what what uh, what heart beat level or what pulse rate number should give the message to the mother that the baby is well. And if not, then the mother should receive a message that the baby is not well and she should go now to the hospital. We are not trying to avoid them to see doctors directly, but to avoid their necessary often uh, visits to the hospital facilities. But also, uh, for now, you know, the people who the, have diabetes. I, I hope the technology won't bring the mothers unnecessary to the hospital after other yes, <laughs> conditions yes, cause exactly. a high fetal rate. And then they think they're supposed to see the doctor or, uh, uh, but I think all that will be all sorted. So are we able to see the pictures? Or uh, we can, uh, I'll just show a uh, short. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Can you see me? Because I, I can't see myself here. No, we no, can't we see can't. you. We are you can't the see me. Okay. Your, your, your presentation. Oh, yeah. Now we can, can you see, see me now? Okay. So I, it's, it's going to be a little bit confusing for you, but I will <laughs> understand as I take you through. So this is, a, this is only a part of the simplified uh, um, hardware part which I'm designing. This is going to be a short, a small display which is going to be at the end of the belt. 
Uh, this is going to be monitoring the fetal, the mother's heartbeat. Uh, this is going to be monitoring the mother's temperature. This is a temperature sensor. And uh, here on this board, you have a JSM module, which is uh, responsible to send data immediately after collecting from the sensors. But also we have the timer, which is going to update with respect, I mean, in real time. But also for the Doppler transducer here to show, to help the, to record the fetal heart rate. Uh, directly, which is a, it is a, it is an improved version of what we use in the hospitals, like I showed uh, on my presentation that we are using the fetoscope. If you've been in hospitals, you're familiar with that in most of our government hospitals. So currently, it's I mean like 40% uh, of development of the hardware itself, but uh, probably I'm looking forward to, to, to improving it more and getting more inputs to make it better. But that, uh, that was the idea itself. I hope I, 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 I gave you some response, good responses to your questions. I don't see any question and okay. I, I see questions here on the on the Q and A session. Clear, clear, clear. Maybe if you'll allow me to respond to these few questions here, I see on the comments. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, and respond to the question. Okay, I'm going to start with the last question here. Someone is asking about, uh, Mr. Abdul is asking about the power issues in rural areas. So this, uh, this uh, fetal heartbeat belt is uh, going to use a powered battery, like the one which is used for uh, most uh, health ICT devices. Uh, which is going to last about uh, 30 to 40 days because the woman will have to come to the hospital eventually, but you're trying to reduce the numbers of the visits or the schedules. But also a good question from, uh, from Clara. Uh, she was asking about the limitations of implementing this. Of course, there are so many limitations in terms of acquiring these devices. As you know, here in, uh, in Tanzania, they are not so available. We have to order them far and it takes time in this time of COVID-19. Uh, it takes time to receive the devices to implement them. So the procedure is slowing down because of that. But also, uh, you know, she asked about the, what happens about the data observation on site. Uh, when the mother and the baby are in danger or and uh, at risk and they are remotely. So, uh, you know, when you say hypertension, it normally affects the mother, not in one day. It's a problem which maybe starts in a, it takes time. But since people ignore it and they don't go for checkup often, then when it happens that the baby dies, it happens suddenly. But if this could have been, uh, if the mother could have been monitoring the baby's heartbeat, I mean, accurately and continuously, this could have been avoided. But also, since it is a real time, a uh, real time fetal heart rate belt, it's going to help to know if there is a nearby facility to come and res to, to come and rescue the the mother, or uh, if the alert gives the mother that maybe see a doctor or a nearby health. Uh, worker personnel. So it's going to help them at least to get awareness of what is happening because not all women are aware about the maternal health uh, education. Thank you. I hope I, under I answered you well. Okay. Uh, I think that was responded to uh, well. Thank you, Christina. There is a hand uh, from one, they, they, there is a hand uh, from Favor. Um, Favor, can you go ahead and ask your question? Uh, thank you so much, Christina. This is really a beautiful uh, project for the mother. Um, my only question is, uh, you've talked about uh, the parents that will be picking data about the uh, 
have uh, aspect of having a threshold, because I didn't hear you talk about the threshold where the alerts would begin. Is there something of that kind? Do you have that at the end of it for purposes of review by doctors? Uh, I just want to hear about what. Can you unmute you. You 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 your question, please? You are a big distance. I beg your pardon? Repeat your question. Um, my question is Does she have, uh, she come up with some threshold for the uh, pressure for the mother's pregnant mother? Because as she was talking about the BP, uh, the girls that will be picking the BP for mothers, uh, there should be a threshold whereby the last would go to the doctor. As I didn't hear about that in her presentation. Is it there? Or else are there databases where she will be recording this information for doctor's review? Those are two things that I just wanted to understand. Thank you for Thank the you question. question. <laughs> So uh, maybe let me take you back to what I am presenting. I am, um, it was a design of a fetal heart belt for women diagnosed with mild preeclampsia. So mild preeclampsia is different, a bit different from severe preeclampsia in pregnancy, but uh, all patients of both mild and severe are given medication and uh, they, are, they are checked for their blood pressure when they visit hospitals and uh, some more people who are who a bit uh, economically but well uh, normally have the BP machines at homes, but majority do only get that service when they go to hospital facilities. But also a uh, standard of care or uh, uh, as a, I did uh, some interviews with doctors and they were advising it is not necessary or advised to take uh, to measure blood pressure for anyone, anyone who is uh, diagnosed to have high blood pressure or low blood pressure every, uh, I mean often or every once in a short while, because it also either contributes to rising that blood pressure or lowering it. So my belt is specifically to fix the issue of uh, helping neonates to get uh, the unborn child to get uh, saved in case of any uh, issue happening with the mother because there was a case happened around 2018 in Tanga region where I used to work. I was in the hospital, so the ma the mother had already she was uh, she was announced dead, but luckily the baby was still alive in the stomach. But they came to realize so late because they had no any means of monitoring whether the baby is alive or not. So whether even if the mother was uh, already had already passed away, maybe it would have been easy for them to save the baby instead. I mean, the baby, not lose all of them. So here, my, my project is focused on avoiding or reducing the number of stillbirth. But also, uh, from my little knowledge I got from the research I conducted, it's not advised so much to conduct uh, blood pressure measurements. And this belt is going to be worn at least thrice a day. So I can't uh, subject a woman or a pregnant woman to take uh, blood pressure measurements three times a day. Uh, it's going to be over, over management of the blood pressure. So I hope I answered you well. I think uh, Favor's question had a bone in it um, because I think uh, uh, probably it could be not part of the project, but I have a feeling also knowing the mother's BP at around that time would also help. Because it could be one of the contributing factors that are uh, uh, causing what we are seeing uh, happening uh, to the to the to the fetus. So I think it's maybe something to think about though, uh, maybe yeah to be worked on. But I think it's also be important to have something that also monitors the mother and the baby because we can't I think isolate the fetus from the mother. So it, they both go hand in hand. So it's something probably to add in your project or maybe probably to think about, but otherwise, thank you so much. Uh, there is another question in the Q, Q and A section that um, someone is asking that, are you aware of any other similar technology that is being probably employed? 
Yes. Um, thank you for the question. So currently, uh, about seven years ago here in most health facilities in Tanzania, they are prepared to use a Doppler, a Doppler machine to measure fetal heart rate, uh, which is, uh, it, it has really helped to, to, to avoid the inconsistencies in prediction of the uh, health of the unborn child. But also that device has been so uh, scarce it has, uh, it's not available to many government hospitals here, but also it's a bit expensive and it's uh, not available to take home. It's only used by the health facility uh, workers, but also it needs transcribing. I mean, it needs uh, interpreting uh, because it only reads numbers. So most women, or most pregnant women, or most laymen in a health uh, knowledge or health education, we will need interpretation, interpretation from the doctors. So what we're trying to do in this project is to simplify, to, to help interpret uh, for the mother to understand. Well, it's not a say that she'll see the numbers only, but she'll also get a message to give a, a summary of what's going on in her tummy or about her baby. So but also uh, I did a, a, a literary review on uh, in most Europe countries or specifically in Netherlands, there was a project in 2017, they were trying to um, implement uh, a belt, which was uh, supposed to, to, to detect the movement of the baby inside the, mama, the mother's stomach. So that was to, to be precise, to help them be more precise because some women would stay three days and say, I didn't hear the baby kicking. And so that was the similar uh, technology I've uh, seen, I've uh, learned about, which is a bit similar to mine, but now this one is more focused on the fetal heart uh, rate readings. Thank you. Now, uh, Christina, for the uh, responses and the, and the, and the uh, presentation. Um, there is one last question that I will allow and then probably we'll close this. And this is from someone from Attic. Uh, will the belt be able to detect changes in fetal heart rate? That is accelerations, decelerations. How will the belt differentiate normal heart violations, e.g. fetal sleep, from abnormal heart changes? Okay, thank you. Thank you for a good question. So uh, this uh, fetal heartbeat is going to record only like the, it is a bit similar to the ECG machine if you're, you're familiar with it. The ECG machine is not, uh, it's on most cases, it's not, it's, not, uh, it's not used continually for the patient, maybe for nine hours or, uh, or seven hours. But there's this machine uh, called Holter machine it's also, it's, I am aware that it's used for about six hours to nine hours, depending on the requirement or what they are doing or uh, what they're trying to solve on that patient. But about the accelerations and decelerations of the heart rate, they are going to be, be displayed in form of the graphs, which are similar to the ECG graphs, if you are aware of them. But also, as soon as the mother wears it, whether she's going to wear it after two hours or after six hours, after every six hours or after every two hours, it's going to record with those uh, decelerations and accelerations. But also uh, there are cases where the baby sleeps and the women would complain about uh, the not hearing the baby kicks or not knowing if the baby is alive or not. Uh, for these cases, we have the maximum number of the, of the hours which a baby is supposed to sleep. So this is put, is put in the range to which the mother, at that time she would have already wear the belt to know because the baby can't sleep the whole day. It's like a normal human. Or it's, it's similar to when a baby, a, a baby is born, they sleep three hours, they eat, they go back to sleep. Some sleep up to four hours, but it's advised to wake them up. So uh, this belt will help a lot because uh, it's going to help figure out or clear those uh, questions or those differences which would not be monitored without having this built. Thank you for your question. I hope I responded uh, well. 
Uh, thank you, Christina. So in short, it will be showing those accelerations. As she said, if it resembles the ECG uh, chart, then it will be able to show the uh, accelerations and accelerations of the heart, heart rate yes, exactly. of, the, of, the, of the fetus. Okay, uh, if there are no more questions, I'd ask uh, Juma to put on his camera, but I think um, he's uh, not been able. Yeah, yeah, you want, uh, okay, uh, thank you, Juma, yes, you're on. Um, thank you both for your presentations. Um, I pray that uh, you push that uh, the innovations uh, uh, to get through. And uh, uh, Juma Aaron presented to us uh, about um, uh, 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 an innovation uh, into uh, looking into hypothermia or to curb the problem of hypothermia among the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, babies. Uh, so we thank you so much. Thank you for joining the conference. Uh, thank you for your time. Please do so next time. Uh, thank, thank you so much. You. I can, you can join in on to the other links that are available for the other sessions if you can. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.